you are a graduate of the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. How are you feeling about Tennessee overall this year? I mean, win total aside, you, you, the Nico era, Josh Heupel has another year in the system, uh, another year rather at the school to allow his system to permeate that team. How do you feel vibe-wise around Tennessee heading into 2024? Oh, off season. It's always sky high, JD. It feels like 98, going to win the SEC, headed to the playoff. And then that Florida game rolls around. It's, oh, God, but on to the next year. I, you know what I mean? Like that, that's what it is annually for Tennessee people. It, and I'm not quite there just yet, but I'm, I'm massively concerned. Week two, they play NC State, which went on a tear towards the end of last season. I think that is a, a tricky game that, that universally Tennessee alums are just, oh, whatever, we're going to kill them. Well, you know, I think they're going to be preseason top 25. Can't completely overlook that one. And, and I, the schedule makers, I don't think, did them any favors. First conference games at Oklahoma. And, and that's going to be the, Oklahoma's debut SEC game. Josh Heupel's return to Norman. I mean, there's going to be so much fanfare with that football game. Again, again it, it's hard for me to imagine Oklahoma losing that game with the atmosphere that, that is going to be there. But... I'm not saying Tennessee can't beat him, but but that's going to be fascinating. I get it. Nico, there's all this hype around him. But I don't know that, J.D., that they're really going to count on him to be, you know, Hendon Hooker 2.0 because one thing that, that gets lost in the Josh Heupel conversation is just how great his teams are at running the football. Hmm. And with what they have back on the offensive line, I, I think they're going to be right there again, one of the, the best in the SEC rushing the football. I think Tennessee's got the best defensive line in the entire SEC very talented, very deep unit there. Now, basically the rest of the defense is, is a huge question mark. But if you can dominate the trenches, that, that'll make up for a lot of issues you have in the secondary and perhaps that linebacker being a little bit thin. So, uh, you know, Tennessee, I'm kind of – they're in a weird place because I, I think this time last year, J.D., it, almost universally, Josh Heupel was regarded as a top-10 coach in the country. Yeah. And now – I don't think anyone has him that. And, and I'm trying to figure out what happened. And, and I, I get it. They, they look bad against Florida. Missouri was awful. They got destroyed by Georgia. But nearly everybody lost to Georgia last year. Missouri won 11 games in, in a big-time bowl game, Cotton Bowl. So I think this is a big year for him. Is he elite? Is he Have, have, have the SEC defenses figured out his scheme? I don't think so. But if they don't win 10 games, I think that's going to be a, a, a fair – question going into 2025 as how elite is Josh Heupel the, the thing that's so interesting to me based on last year was the level of talent on the offensive side of the football to me felt drastically different than what they had in 2022 Hendon Hooker probably should have been a Heisman Trophy finalist Jalen Hyatt won the Bolitnikoff and you roll into this season and there's a lot of excitement around Joe Milton. There's a lot of excitement or I guess this last season Joe Milton and Dante Thornton and what they were going to be and Squirrel White and it didn't necessarily translate, I think, the way that a lot of us thought it would. Um, I think Joe Milton not being mobile, as, as mobile as a Hendon Hooker when it came to extending plays, I think Tennessee really felt that. I think having Brew McCoy go down, they really felt that. Dante Thornton not be healthy and hit the ground running, they really felt that. And so I think as bad a rap as Joe Milton got, and some of it is definitely on him, uh, this offense still scored 30 points a game. And some of that, you look across the, the different points in the schedule where they're able to, able to run it up a little bit more. Um, I felt like if Josh Heupel can score 30 points a game with Joe Milton at quarterback, what can he do with Nico? And I think what you said is on the money, too, to start their season. If they get 4-0, and those first four, specifically NC State and at Oklahoma, how confident is Nico? How, how, how high is the vibe in that locker room? How, how high is the confidence across the team? And I think if they can get to 4-0, and that, to me not just from a mathematical standpoint, but from a trajectory standpoint, I'd feel really excited and really optimistic about hitting that 10 win mark. Right. And if you look at Josh Heupel's numbers last year, it was, it, it was the worst offense he's put on a, on a field and they won nine games. Yep. I mean, if that's, if that's the worst and you're winning nine games in this conference, uh, you know, I think that says you're one heck of a coach. And uh, I believe their scoring in the SEC was like, 45 points per game in conference play, and then it jumped down to about 28. Joe Milton, for, for all the negativity, I believe he threw for around 3,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, and maybe like five picks. Again, these are bad numbers. Uh, it just tells you how ridiculous offensive production, Heupel and company are used to putting up. 
And if they can get even close to that, Tennessee is going to make the college football playoff. But uh, I, I can't I, – I'm, they're right on that, on that line. It, will they make it? I'm, I'm not confident enough to say they will, but I, I certainly think they're going to be in the mix all season long. And it's funny because with Nico, like the unknown is undefeated. Like we think we know what he's going to be. We know what he was as a recruit, was the number one player in the class of 23 for us here at On3 and Charles Power. If he says someone's a big time player, like I trust Charles Power implicitly. But when it comes to this upcoming season, like I just, I hope there is a little bit of patience with him as he gets his feet wet being a starting quarterback in college football. It's one of the reasons why I was glad that he didn't play last year, quite honestly, because I think there is such a thing as playing too early. When it comes to what he brings to the table, you mentioned the run game. I think what he does with his legs, and we saw it in the bowl game against Iowa, the design quarterback run game I think looks different. Him ad-libbing when he breaks contain and scrambling for eight yards on second and seven, I think that looks different and as another element to the offense that they didn't really have last year. Even extending plays, I mean, you, you cover Squirrel White for – two to three seconds, you know, good good for you. You cover him for four or five. I don't know if I believe you if you're telling me you're going to do that consistently. So that's that's fascinating. Uh, Mike, when we talk about, like, what success looks like for Tennessee in 2024, is it college football playoff? Is it 10 wins? If they win 10 but don't make the CFP, do we feel some type of way? What is, like, the line of demarcation in your mind where you're like, if this happens, Tennessee fans, we can live with it for the better part of the offseason? I, and I think it's going to be this way for about half the conference, which is, uh, you know, I think these coaches are going to be upset with their fans, but it, it's playoff or bust. Yeah. And I, I, again, I think that's for half the half the conference. And, and obviously, we know half the conference is not going to make the college football play. It'd be good for my business if they did, but <laughs> uh, realistically, four, five, maybe six. And I, I think six is really stretching it. Five may even be stretching it, but I think that is that is the expectation across uh, the SEC. Heck, I said half. It may be even more. I mean, it may be about 10 teams expect to, to get there, and a lot of fans are going to get disappointed annually unless we uh, go to 14, 16, 18. <laughs> Hey, and who's to say we're not going to that here in the near, in the near future? I see the, <laughs> see the NCAA tournament talking about expanding the March Madness. I'm like – are we sure that's a, are we we want to do okay it's i get it it'll make money you do do what you want to do but i wonder uh, that's a whole other show in itself mike we could definitely uh, we, could, we could go down a rabbit hole on the uh, on the playoff structure but i'm with you i think when you open up the field to 12 teams and how good the sec is and how good i think a lot of these rosters are like yeah okay we are one of the top 12 teams in america or we expect to be and if we're not you know we got some problems Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.